it's a mild third of March today. And as I was passing on the way from Sherwood Heath on the way home, I thought it may well be worth, as it's late afternoon now, popping up, having a walk through Clipson Old Quarter here, through sections A, B, C and D, to look on the off chance that an early glowworm larva is already making an appearance. Spring is only just around the corner. Maybe within a fortnight, the first chiff chaffs will be chiff chaffing away as I walk up here. This is going to be the first of many such surveys for glowworm larva, and they're typically found on this path here. Not as wide as it used to be. You've seen a lot about it and heard a lot about it in the last few weeks. So let's see if there's a glowworm larva wandering on it. Now the basic surveying technique for glowworm larva on here is just a simple slow walk, eyes on the path, usually a few yards in front or whatever suits and you're just looking for a larva which can be anything from 12mm up to 27mm in length. They are quite obvious, even the smaller ones. The big problem now is that there's less path. The path is 50 to 75 percent grown over from right to left as you look at it now it was much wider so the glowworm larva have got less path to wander on and if they're wandering down the middle of the path which they often tend to do they're far more likely now to be crushed underfoot under mountain bike wheel or under hoof 2021 saw the highest death rate of the larva that found i think it was about 33 percent a third of the glowworm larva found here during the course of early spring 2021 were unfortunately killed hence the need to press for this path to be reinstated to be at least widened and the only practical way of doing that is to weed kill the path on the right hand side that way it makes it a lot easier if a volunteer work party comes along hose in hand I've tried clearing it it's too much like hard work you really need the path to be sprayed with weed killer I don't like doing it and I've never encouraged doing it but it's the only way now here's the problem this is an area and it's a short strip Took me about half an hour, three quarters of an hour of wheezing and whining to clear this. It really was hard going with a home. But this is the true width of the path here through section C, which is where I am now, not far off the top of section C. You can just see the work that would be needed to restore this path to its former width. Even I had forgotten just how wide this path was. It was certainly easy for three people to walk abreast to survey for glowworm larvae. And Dennis, Martindale and myself did that a number of times. To see the path restored to end up somewhere near this width would be of enormous benefit to the glowworm population here. And it's a glowworm population that is probably got a lot of recovering to do based on recent years evidence <laughs> I'll post a link or even just put a short clip in of the grass strip how it was when it was first cleared a few weeks ago it's already greening over greened over a lot in a few months you won't tell that it was ever done it's going to be a lot of regrowth from all the scrub 
that was along this length but at least the next time it's cut it's going to be a much easier job than what it was this time I've had an unbelievable I love finding these just brings back so many memories small label this is 405 it's first label found for donkey's years on this right hand side as you look at it now this right hand side of the path I won't be surprised if this isn't 10 or 11 years old it may well go back to 2011 could be the year we had, I think it was 800 plus glowworms here. What a fantastic sight this was for glowworms. Let's hope we can get it back to something like that again. Two. I've only walked a few yards further up D, and now all oh, this side of the path has been cleared. Some of these labels, these old labels, are starting to show. These are two small labels as well. And we've got female 246 there, and female 483, both within a couple of yards of each other, both still in the ground. There are literally thousands of such labels deep within the grass and the heather here. Just wonder if we don't get shot. Well, I've made it to the centre tree. First run up through sections A, B, C and D have proved fruitless, not surprisingly. But it is mild, it's more than mild enough for glowworm lava to be out and about. Ideally, you'd need a couple of days where the temperature's at least over 10. There's a chance we could get one on the way back down because the surveys that we've always done it was always up through a b c and d hang around at the top which is what i'm doing now i'm good at hanging around have a look for a few bits up here around the center tree for 10 minutes quarter of an hour and then walk back down again the larval surveys that dillis and i always did always took place usually in that last hour or hour and a half of daylight Quite often, so by the time we'd got back to the car, we could hardly see anything. There's still quite a bit of work we always to do, because we always presume that the glowworm larva became active late afternoon, early evening. At least once the sun, or any sign of the sun, had come off the path that I've just walked up. However, when I've been here before and had a walk up during the daytime, even sort of early afternoon, I found lava freshly dead on the path. Dead only by a matter of half an hour to an hour or so. One day I may spend the day walking up and down this path just to see if there is any real time when glue and lava appear on the path. On a cloudy day like today, given a couple of extra degrees warmth, I have a feeling that there may well not be any particular time of peak activity. 
I don't know. One of those cases where we think we know everything about a species and find out we don't. We know very little. Becoming a bit more overcast than it has been. Started to brighten up. We're just about to walk this last part of section B and then section A, and it doesn't look as though there will be any glowworm larva on the path, but it's the first such survey of the year, so that's a good start. I know we've not found one, but it's always nice when you can do these kind of things when it's mild enough. I dare say, within the next two months, there's still going to be a frosty period. But you never know. Certainly now, most mild evenings when the temperatures are decent level, anything around sort of 10 or upwards, then it's a wander up here every evening. Probably won't be too long before we see the first glowing lava of 2022. Right, I'm off.